I'm leaving Bristol. That's the first time I've actually said it. I have sent messages to my closest friends, letting them know what's happening. My family knows about it. But I haven't said it out loud to anyone else except him, who thankfully is also leaving Bristol with me. We're leaving Bristol. There are a few reasons I decided to make this video. First of all, this is kind of all I'm thinking about at the moment. We've been getting this house ready for valuation, estate agent photos, listing, and all that stuff. It's been a lot of tidying, cleaning, moving stuff into a storage unit, and uh, basically making the house look so lovely that I walked through it this morning going, why are we leaving? <laughs> this is really nice. And the second reason is that I know it's not that usual for two people in their early 40s to up sticks and move to a place where they don't know anyone. Perhaps you've been thinking of moving and you might enjoy hearing someone talk about their experience. That's kind of the point of YouTube videos, for me anyway, as a viewer and as a maker of them. First though, tell me in the comments please where you live and do you like it? And if so, tell me why, because we're looking. We could be neighbours. This is my third major move as an adult. The first was from Suffolk to London when I was 18. Second was from London to Bristol when I was 31. And this is the third one. Now my goal in my career has always been to be able to do whatever I do from wherever I am. Meaning that the world can open up to me. And I'm sure that's because I got used to that kind of thing all through my childhood. My family moved every three years because of my dad's job. So I've had a lot of practice in my life of moving, of starting again, of having to find new friends and establish my life in a new place. And although this will be my 22nd house when we find it and move there. It's very different though, moving as an adult versus moving as a child. Because unless you've grown up in a place or gone to university there or had a job where you interact with other people who live in the place, it can be very hard to make new friends as an adult. And I've certainly found that in Bristol. Even though people talk on and on about it being such a creative and open and friendly place, I'm sure it is over there somewhere, but that has not been my experience. It's funny because moving to Bristol was a real spur of the moment idea. I was wanting to leave London. I'd had my ups and downs and ups and downs and ups and then downs there. I had ended a relationship. I needed to get out of the house that we were sharing together. I had slept on a few friends' sofas for a few weeks and I just needed to have a plan. And earlier that year, I had had my first really lovely experience in Bristol. I'd always heard people talking about how great it was and I had only ever seen very dingy streets around venues that I'd played with various bands from like the year 2000 to 2012. And I, I really didn't understand what they were talking about. But then I did this trip where I was taking photos at the Arnolfini Art Gallery for an event. And then I walked outside and it was really sunny and everyone was sitting out by the harbour side and it was gorgeous. And I just thought, wow, this place is lovely. And then all of this stuff happened and I ended up wanting to move and Bristol won. I knew a few people living here, so it didn't feel completely terrifying. And I just did it. So September 2012, I moved into my first flat in Bristol. And to start with, Bristol was kind of like my big exhale place because I was still doing a lot of work in London. I was doing a lot of Megabus and National Express coach trips with lots of music gear to go and play in different bands in London. I was still doing all of my freelance social media work and photography and video and all that stuff. And I didn't find any work in Bristol for a while, so it was very much my kind of time off place to be. And I would say that the first four or five years, I felt like I was really in the right place. I knew some nice people. Um, I was using it as a base to make music. I recorded Direction of Travel, Brace for Impact and Exotic Monsters here. And also the Obey Robots album, which is as yet not unnamed, because I know what it's called, but I'm not telling you, secret name. Um, so I've made all of that music here. And yeah, it's been a really creative space for me. I was able to buy my first house on my own in 2014. Um, again, after another relationship ended, I needed to find a place. And to my absolute surprise, I was able to do that. So that was handy. And then, yeah, it was a great base for traveling around on tour to different places. Really nice place to be. Nice food and nice amenities and things. There's nothing wrong with this place. It's a lovely place. I'll probably miss it and feel sad to leave.
iced coffee. It's so hot in Bristol today. But that's not why. I made a terrible mistake. Not moving to Bristol 10 years ago, oh no. But uh, moving into this room from my beautiful launch pad studio four months ago. Tim! This is one of the reasons. <sighs> I really tried, I really, really tried to settle myself in here and to start using it as the creative space that it's supposed to be. But one of the biggest reasons that we got this house in 2018 was because of that room upstairs that I turned into my studio. Because of the light that came in there and it's so beautiful up there and it faces onto the road which you would think would make it noisier, but turns out it does not. <laughs> this is just what living in a terraced house is like. And making music at home and working from home is always gonna come with its challenges, but the result is still the same, that I, can't, I just can't, can't get stuff done in here. Yeah, this was just a huge mistake. And we talked about reversing it, about putting me back upstairs again, switching this back into being our bedroom again, but it's just so much faff. And there's more going on here than just a room not working out for me. As one of my gurus in life, Mark Manson, so wisely says, if it's not a f yes, it's a no. And it's no longer a f yes for me. It just isn't. And this feeling's been growing little by little all year, I think. And maybe before that as well, because the pandemic has been hard. I live in a small villagey part of Bristol called Shirehampton, which is a great place to live. If you're looking for somewhere in Bristol to live, move to Shirehampton, it's fab. But during the pandemic, when we went on full on hermit lockdown for quite a long time, possibly haven't quite properly come out of it, Bristol became a thing that was over there somewhere. And I very, very, very rarely, very rarely went into Bristol. I'm in Bristol, but you know, into Bristol. And I'm sure that's had a lot to do with this growing feeling. I'm not someone who's materialistic. I have musical equipment that I enjoy having and I have, you know, camera stuff that I like. And I've got a few typewriters, maybe a few typewriters more than a person actually needs in 2022, but that's neither here nor there. I've never dreamed of having a big house with a big garden or anything like that. I've just worked my way steadily from renting to owning a small house to co-owning a slightly larger house. And now we're looking at properties about 150 miles away in a town where we don't know anyone. And it's not, not scary, but it's not terrifying. And it feels exciting. And it feels like a fresh new adventure. And I'm really ready for that. If my work situation hadn't become so untenable in this room, I don't know if I would have started looking to see what else we could get elsewhere. I don't know, really don't know. I just think though that sometimes things happen all at once in a row and if you just listen to that quiet voice inside that's saying what it wants and what it doesn't want then you can end up in a really interesting place in your life because it's that for me when it comes to making music or making anything creative I think that's the skill I'm trying to always hone is that listening to the quiet voice inside and everything else around that can get so noisy and it's so easy to second guess yourself and I do that a lot, but this feels really right. And I went to scope out the place where I think we're gonna end up a few weekends ago and it was gorgeous. And I saw some houses and they were beautiful. And I was feeling very emotional that weekend. There's a lot of, like I felt it here, like a kind of a excitement, fear. I had tears in my eyes. It was very visceral, actually. But now I just feel really calm. Perhaps because I'm so tired from tidying up. <laughs> that could be why. But yeah, it doesn't feel like the wrong thing. If it starts to feel like the wrong thing, I'll try and listen to that quiet voice also. <laughs> I think that's all we can do. Listen to that voice. And so, in a few months, fingers crossed if things go well with the house stuff, we will be embarking on a new adventure somewhere else. And it's all gonna be taking up quite a lot of brain space and heart space. So I'll be sharing more with you along the way. And we'll see, see what happens. Life, life is happening. And to be honest, it just feels so good to be doing something, making some forward motion. 
because that has been sorely lacking in the past few years. And when I start feeling like I'm not myself, then I start feeling no good at all. It's time to get back to that adventuring spirit, I think. Set off into the slightly unknown and see what happens. I do think it's telling, by the way, that this was supposed to be the new launch pad. I've referred to this as the new launch pad a few times. But I never put the sign on the door. And now that we're gonna be having viewings and stuff in here, that sign's not gonna be going up. I feel like sometimes I'm telling myself things without quite telling myself. My subconscious is acting and it's waving at my conscious mind or it's like knocking on the door saying, hey, I'm telling you something here, why don't you listen? That voice again, that quiet voice. And I wasn't listening, but I wasn't putting the sign up. This room has never become the creative home that I had hoped. It's gorgeous though. And uh, I'm gonna be making lots of videos in here before we leave, because who knows when that'll even be. But it feels good. It feels good to say I'm leaving Bristol, hopefully in 2022. And uh, no hard feelings. It's been great. I've thoroughly enjoyed my time here, most of it. And uh, I'll be back to play shows in the future. As always, if you have any questions or wanna have a chat with me, make sure you comment below. Please click like on this video to share it with other people who might enjoy it. And why not join me in celebrating the original and best launch pad in this video here, where I give you an honest, messy studio tour. See you soon.